What is up, adventurers? Welcome to 775 Supermoto Moto Vlog. We just did a little run up the hill, uh, one of those hills, a little off roading up a back road called Toll Road, which is uh, all dirt, some rocks, a little mud, a little snow. But that's not what we're here for today. Today, we, that's you and I, are gonna go check out some stolen cars. Yeah, you heard that right, stolen cars. South Reno, especially in the foothills, is uh, undoubtedly one of the most popular places to dump a stolen vehicle. And I'm going to show you a few of those, maybe more than a few. We'll see how many's up here. I've actually done uh, this video that we're about to embark on. I've actually done this three times. One of the times I had a corrupt SD card, so we were hosed there. One of the times my GoPro was pointed straight down the entire time, so that footage was ruined. And then uh, the third and final time that I did this run, half of the footage didn't come out. So, after doing a uh, quick little half hour jaunt up the hill, making sure that this new SD card I just bought is indeed working, and hopefully, fingers crossed, hopefully the camera angle is correct. That's kind of been the issue with the last couple of times that we've done this run, is I couldn't get the, on this helmet, this is a, uh, like a motocross helmet with goggles on this particular helmet. You have to like really get the camera way out in front of the helmet and then like the mouth nose portion of the helmet is already tilted way back. So like <coughs> since you don't know what angle your head is at when you're riding, you make an assumption and then you know you, you do a video or two and then you figure out that it's all wrong. So fingers crossed we'll hope this one works out so it is the first week of 2020 so happy new year to anybody watching and uh, any new subscribers to the channel so far just a couple of short videos one of them being a quick little walkthrough on the bike itself you know what's done to it and that sort of thing and then the other was just uh, some intro stuff I was working on. So I'm going to upload a couple of more here probably this weekend. This being one of them. So that is what we're up to today. Hearty there. So as soon as we get to the area I'm talking about, I'll catch up with you guys and we'll do some exploring. See you over there. Alright guys, back with you. We are about to enter a semi-locked gate. I say semi because it doesn't actually have a lock on it, but it's, uh, it's a Bureau of Land Management gate that isn't really meant to keep people out, but it's meant to keep things in. And you guys will see what some of those things are, hopefully shortly. They're uh, not super elusive, but they're either around or they're not. So we're going to see what we've got ahead. So we're going to jump through this fence here and head up into those hills. I already see some cars up there. Probably people doing some shooting and stuff. So we're gonna run through here real quick. Yep, I see some of the elusive aminals that I'm talking about. This gate's a real SOB. Because not only does it weigh a ton, but you have to like open it and lodge it in the ground. 
Otherwise you won't have enough time to get through it. There's Lucy in all her glory. She's a little dirty from that run up toll road we just did. Alright, here we go. It's 2.30, so we got about an hour, two hours or so of daylight, so we got plenty of time. It says to lock the gate, but it's not actually a lock over here, so. Alright, so we're gonna make a big loop today. Checking out these stolen items. It's a pretty nice day for January in northern Nevada. It's about 50, I don't know, 55, maybe 54, somewhere in there. Um, usually this time of year I'm kind of a minimum of two layers on the bottom and then like three layers plus this I got a pretty heavy textile coat that I usually wear on top. And today I'm just a pair of jeans on the bottom and uh, one thermal and the jacket on top. So pretty decent weather, no complaints. So these are what that gate is designed to keep in. These are Northern Nevada wild horses. Not the thing walking on the road up here, but these critters right there. It's a long way from anywhere. Lots of these guys down here today, usually when it's warmer, they're kind of up in the hills, but they're all down here getting a drink. So these, yeah, 100% wild horses, not tame. This is not someone's land. This is all BLM land. Uh, people do feed them, which is kind of frowned upon. There's a group in town in Reno, I only know this because I saw the guy that comes out here and like disperses hay and stuff for them. Because otherwise, I don't know, I mean obviously they've survived here this long, but I don't know what those things will eat, especially, well, I mean not even especially in the winter, but any time because Nevada is a desert and we don't have a lot of vegetation, so there's not grass or really any of that stuff. I mean. Once you get out of neighborhoods here where there's sprinklers on, it's all just sage and uh, tumbleweeds and stuff like that. So not really sure what those guys that don't come down into town, what they live off of, because there's pretty slim pickings. Another motorcycle in front of us. I like doing these videos during the week um, coming up here because this area gets it's a lot of uh, a lot of foot traffic and stuff. Not even foot traffic, but just a lot of traffic in general on the weekends because this is kind of a like a popular you know off-road spot or whatever. People, you know, I mean there are some dirt bikes and stuff up here, but uh, mostly like UTVs and side by sides and that sort of thing. And I don't have anything against those. I think they're pretty rad. But when you're a single track motorcycle. Side-by-sides do all kinds of damage to the trails. So like I came up here uh, a couple of weeks back on I think a Monday and the trail that I had ridden on the Friday prior to that was like just demolished from those side-by-sides. So nothing against them. Like I said, I would own one and I would rip stuff up with it, but it makes it kind of a pain in the butt when uh, you come in behind those things on a bike. Especially, you know, not so much if you're on like a straight up dirt bike like this guy in front of me was, but when you're on a supermoto bike that has three tires on it, it can get a little dicey, especially when your back tire is bald. The uh, road I just went up before, prior to, prior to setting out on this part of the journey, had a lot of snow and ice on it, so that was, that was really pucker factor, I tell you, I, uh, I, I honestly can't tell you that I've ever driven 
ridden any motorcycle that I've ever owned on snow or ice, and I did both today on this thing um, on street tires, so something to hang my hat on, I guess. I don't know. It, uh, it actually wasn't too bad. It was all going uphill, so you just kind of throttle through it and pucker up a little bit. These we're gonna we're gonna circle back. There's a there's a car up here we're gonna go check out, and then we're gonna circle back and check out these RVs. I don't suspect that these RVs are gonna be here too much longer. I drive. There's a main road that you might be able to see once we get up top here. Uh, that runs kind of on the from the north, I guess the northwest side of town to the southwest side of town. That kind of goes right by this area and I'm on that road like at least a few times a week and there was somebody up here in what looked like a pretty official vehicle like I said this is all BLM land and it looked like some kind of a you know government type vehicle up here yesterday taking a look at one of those RVs I'm, it, it may just have been a random dude I don't know I couldn't see markings on the on the van or anything some horsies up here too. All right, let me get this thing turned around, which is always fun on loose gravel. All right, so stop number one. Oh. All right, so stop number one on our little tour of abandoned, stolen, lost vehicles. Starts with this guy. This, to me, being kind of a car guy, is uh, RSX, Acura RSX. So I'm guessing, once again, being a guy that's played around with cars for my entirety of, an, of my adult life. I would have to guess somebody bought this clip for the motor that was there. I think the RSX is, if I'm not mistaken, have the 24, the K24 VTEC motor. And that is obviously what's missing. You can tell that some care was taken because you've got, you know, stuff lodged into the coolant lines. So there was, a, you know, there was a degree of care taken in making sure things didn't leak all over the garage floor. Then is intact, which, you know, I'm not going to say if, <clears throat> if it was stolen, it wouldn't be if, you know, somebody just joy rode the thing for the night. But obviously it was in a pretty good wreck because it got, it got both airbags and then, uh, you know, looks like it was chopped. It was a sunroof car dome light wires and stuff there and then you've got your drain tube for <coughs> excuse me the sunroof factory radio harness is still intact that's kind of crazy you don't see that too much on these anymore it's interesting because there was a time I had an Acura Integra back in the day and I remember when these came out like how compared to the Integras like how far advanced they are and now here we are you know 2020 I don't know what year this was you can probably figure it out, obviously, by the VIN. It's probably like an 04. There's a 4 and an S. I don't know, what is it, 8th digit, 10th digit? I can't remember. You guys can figure it out if you can see the VIN. But this is stop number one. So I don't know. I don't know if this was stolen, chopped up, and then the remains were brought here, or if somebody bought this as a clip for the motor and all those goodies and then dumped it here it's hard to say it could be either you would think if you were going to go to all that effort that if there was a possibility like of being fingerprints or something on it you would simply just bust the vin number the vin plate off of it which they didn't do but there's also a good chance based on the glass that's over there on the ground and here that this thing had a full windshield in it when it got here so not sure kind of a mystery so that's stop number one. We're going to make kind of a circle from back where we came. We're going to stop at these two RVs. This one down here is a little more interesting than the other one. Um, these both appeared here within about a week of each other. I think when I checked the the ticket from the BLM, there's like a 
you guys will see it. I'll show it to you. There's a, a date stamp on the ticket that the BLM left. It's, I think, 1023 on that and like 10, 13 or 17 on that one. I don't know. There's Lucy. She did a great job today running up the hill. This back tire is toast. As you can see, I actually don't know how many more safe rides I've got left on that tire because I'm an idiot and I do skid outs and burnouts and everything else and I've got all kinds of stuff showing through. So this road that we're on just kind of goes up the hill and dead ends. People, I think, go back there and shoot. Not real sure. So we're going to head down to this guy, this travel trailer, fifth wheel deal. Check him out. It's kind of cool because we can actually get inside this one, or we could as of a week ago. Um, the chassis RV that's down there, that's like a 80s Ford, is trashed it's like and i mean not only is it trash like beat to death like this one is but it uh it's full of trash so not sure you know obviously anything i'm gonna think about these is going to be speculation because i'm not sure what the story with either of these are i know people do camp up here the crazy thing is i feel like i remember this fifth wheel that we're going to approach first i i I feel like I distinctively remember there being like cars and ATVs around it one day, but that could have just been looky loose, you know, like me coming up here. That tire wasn't here last week, so somebody dumped that off. And that pile of poo wasn't here, so somebody dumped that off. Wee. I said it was kind of a nice day, I'll be honest with you. It's actually. It's warm when I'm not riding. Uh, warm enough, in fact, that I'm actually kind of hot. So this is this is number two here. So we'll run up in this thing. Check it out. I'm gonna take. Eh, I'm gonna leave my gloves on. I'm gonna take my gloves off. So this one's a little more interesting the, than the other one. When we come and we look, there's two tickets on here, and they're from two different places. So. This is City of Reno, Renino, Renino, Reno Municipal Code. And then this is actually a Bureau of Land Management ticket. Um, this one, so yeah, 1021 at 326. Uh, and they're calling this Hidden Valley. Uh, Hidden Valley is a neighborhood that's actually like right over that hill. But I guess this is maybe like the Hidden Valley, um, like natural space or something. So this one's a little more interesting because it's... Huh, those steps were folded out the last time I was here. Oh, that's classy. <sighs> nice. That makes you think twice about going up in one of these things. <sighs> kind of crazy, like... I don't think anybody's up here with diabetes. So that's... How did the... <sighs> Okay, so they do fold out. Oh, I was gonna say, I was just here, and this thing was, there's absolutely like, no sign of anybody being in here for a while, and then I come up here, and then there's like immediately <laughs> needles. So, I don't know. I can't make a determination of why this is here. Like, is it stolen and somebody dumped it here? Or, because all the stuff in it is gone. I mean, like, with the exception of the stove and the microwave, which somebody's broken, everything else is gone. But you've got gloves down here. I don't know. It's uh, definitely a mystery. The thing is really shaky, too. Or, option B... Was somebody like camping in this and took some time off? And left for a week or a couple of days and people came up here and just went to town on this thing. I mean it was a nice it was a nice fifth wheel, full bathroom, shower, toilet. Queen bed, dual slides. So this is a slide, and then the bedroom section is a slide. AC, because see, look, somebody's taking all the wiring. I don't feel like anybody's done that here. Like, I feel like that happened somewhere else. 
and then it got brought here. But so somebody brought it here, put it put it on rocks, and stole the wheels off of the passenger side. <laughs> And the crazy part is there's a house right there. There's a house 300 yards from here. So, I don't know, it's very, it's very odd. The circumstances are really strange that it's within eye shot and ear shot of that. I mean, it does have some ghetto stuff on it. So like, that's some homemade nonsense that somebody's done at some point. It's actually in a little worse shape than it was um, a week ago when I was up here. Those holes, I don't think we're in the side. So kids have been, you know, kids, people, whatever, have been hucking rocks at it. But the wheels are on this side. So which leads me to believe, sorry, I got the burps. Which leads me to believe that this was here and then the slides were out, so they stole the wheels from the other side, which were more accessible. That's what it leads me to believe. I don't know, you guys You guys, tell me what you think in the comments. Gas picket right there for, I'm guessing diesel for the generator, that stuff was probably in that cubby. Propane maybe in there, or batteries? No, very strange. So let's stop number two. So that, what I say, the 23rd? So that showed up like the week of, like the week of Halloween or the week before Halloween. That thing is gonna take a heck of a lot of effort to get out of here too, because it obviously doesn't, <laughs> doesn't have wheels, at least the fifth wheel, like receiver hitch, the hitch itself is still on it. Too bad because it's gonna cost you know the city or who's BLM? Is that, I guess that's government, right? So it's gonna cost the BLM quite a bit of money to remove that thing. Like it was probably a real, it's probably a, a haul to get it up there because this is not not a smooth road and it's pretty steep. I mean. I don't know. That one makes me scratch my head more than the rest of them, without question. Just because of the difficulty of getting it up there and all of the stuff that's missing out of it. I don't know. You guys tell me what you think. Was it here and people broke into it here and stole everything? Or did that bad boy get stripped off site and then dumped here? The, qu the only question that I have about that, like the only reason I don't think that's necessarily what happened is because of the slides. So I feel like the slides had to have been intact when it got here. And then somebody blasted the slides out and then, I don't know, whatever, you guys tell me. So this is stop number, what are we on, three here? So this one, 10-5 of 19. So this, actually this, I can't see it, so the, the Department of the is that Department of Interior? Yeah. So BLM, their stuff washes out way quicker than the city of Reno. So wherever this was, I mean, maybe I don't know what the I don't know what SAVE is, S A V E. I don't know what that acronym is for, but it's obviously a branch of the Reno PD. So that ticket that I can still read is from the fifth of October. But who knows, that may be, you know, those could be both be written by the same person or they could that could have gotten put on there somewhere in, you know, in town and, you know, then the BLM one, like this one, you can't even think about getting in. So it's funny because it's almost like some of the stuff in here, like that AC, I mean, there's an AC up there, but it almost seems like some of the stuff in here could have come from that one. So I don't know, maybe maybe this and that both got dumped up here the same week. <laughs> Definitely strange stuff. Somebody, I think that tag is new. Obviously no plate on it or any of that stuff. It's funny, this thing had dual, like dual plate locations. Or maybe, I guess those are just the tail lights. And then the plate would have went below that one. 
So kind of strange, the interesting thing is, I don't know if you can see it on camera or not, but there's a, an RV up there as well, which is about like at the same height as that one. But the difference is, I'm positive people live in that one because I there's lights on all the time. But see, that's the thing. I feel like same thing was, oh, that's fantastic. Look at the size of that bad boy. Um, gee, many Christmas, where did that come from? Oh man, this is bad news. This may end our day short here, because I think that's into the good stuff. Um, yeah, we may have to wrap on this one for today. I can't tell. I don't hear air coming out of it. But if I pull it out and lose it on the, like if I pull it out and lose air, I can't get home. So I guess we're gonna wrap today. And I'm gonna go to my house and see if <laughs> see if that's still holding air. And then we can do another ride another day. But that's it for today, guys. Thanks to uh, people's bullshit on the road. I obviously just picked that up because that wasn't on there at any point. I feel like the tire's fine. It's kind of a crazy angle for that to have gone through that, but I'm really like mortified to pull it out because I'm about three miles from my house. So we're gonna jet home. So that's it for today. Sorry for the short ending there, or the short video. I was planning on giving you guys a heck of a lot more. So we're gonna make the run home. <clears throat> kind of go from there and see what happens with that nail. If the nail's good, maybe we'll come back tomorrow and revisit the rest of these, but as of right now, that's not looking like much of a possibility. So that's it guys. I will catch up with you. Remember if you like the video, you appreciate the content, throw me a like, subscribe, all that good stuff. It's greatly appreciated. And we will catch you next time. See you guys.